everybody. Today's video I want to answer some questions that my good mate Chad, the fat man, left on Instagram. And the questions about my knife buying approach. He asked me things like, would I ever consider paying $100 for a knife? What's the most expensive production knife I bought? And would I rather buy five cheap bulky magnum knives or save up for one expensive one? Well that last question, would I rather buy five cheap bulky magnums or save up for an expensive one? The answer is both, because I've done both in the past. One of my big things is the idea that there are good quality budget knives out there if you just look. And what do we mean by budget knife? Well, everybody's budget's different, clearly. So maybe one useful definition of a budget knife is a knife that is noticeably cheaper than the general cost of similar knives from other manufacturers. So for example, um, the Mora Clipper, the Victorinox Spartan, uh, open L's. They're all good quality knives for not a lot of money when you consider what you can pay for junk. But I think for um, the rest of the video it's probably going to be easier if we go to the desktop and uh, we can actually get some knives out. So would I rather buy five cheap knives, <coughs> excuse me, or save up for an expensive one? Well, as I say, I've done both in the past. And there's a brand here, Rough Rider, uh, which are definitely budget knives. These cost about £15. What's that? $23, $24, something like that. And Rough Riders are very useful to a collector like me because it means you can get different patterns to build up your collection quite cheaply. So we've got Stockman with the three blades. We've got a canoe with just two. And we've got a camp knife which has a large blade, a stupid tin opener. Oh, hang on. and a bottle opener screwdriver. And a pointy spike. So yeah, I like these kind of knives because you can build up your collection a lot easier than buying, say, case versions of these. And with the um, other budget knives I mentioned, Open L, Victorinox and uh, Mora. I like those because they're extremely good products for the prices and you don't actually need to spend any more to get a better knife. You can spend a lot more money and get a nicer knife perhaps, but in terms of quality they're as good as anything. So what's the most expensive production knife? Well I think the most expensive one I own isn't necessarily one that I bought myself. It's probably this, which was a gift from the fat man. Benchmade Megumi. It's a lovely little knife, carbon fibre, cocobolo, uh, S30V blade steel. A little cracker, but I would count that as an expensive knife. I think to buy one over here you're probably looking at £180. But it's lovely. I think the most expensive production knife that I bought, well production folding knife, would be this Mazarin, a Mazarin Atti with um, beach scales. 
single blade, S35VN, single thumb stud, decorated liners. It's a gorgeous, gorgeous knife, and I paid for this, I think, £81. They're a bit cheaper now, it's been out a couple of years, but the quality of this is superb. And £81, I think, equates today to around $125. So that's the most expensive full production pocket knife, I think. Although the most expensive um, production knife overall, I believe, in my collection, is this Carisuando fixed blade. Curly Birch, Reindeer Antler, the blades RWL34, which I like a lot, and that is a good chunky knife. That cost me, oh, I think £110 a few years ago, so that's about $170. Lovely knife. Put that there. I do have uh, another one actually thinking about it. This is a production knife. It's Luthier knife by Chambriard and it's Le Compagnon. This has got horn scales. Uh, blade steel was, I think, 14C28, if I remember. A lovely, lovely thing. This was 108 euros, so that is about $123. Very nice knife indeed. I do have a couple of folding knives that are a bit more expensive. The Laguiole by Artisan Coutelier, actually it's about the same price as that, it's uh, about 108 euros. This is a cracker. Now this is, it's not a full custom because each of the options, the blade steel, the finish, the handle material, the decoration, you choose an option off a list and basically put it together yourself from, from the different choices available. But it's made start to finish by one fella, uh, although I'm assuming <coughs> he gets the blades machine blanked and doesn't actually start with raw stock for the blade. And this was, um, yeah. 108 euros, about 123 dollars, 80 quid. But I have another leg all, <coughs> which is far and away the most expensive um, pocket knife that I've bought, which is this one from Fontenil Pateau, Juniper Scales. And this has got RWL34 blade steel, and that says handmade in France. So it's not really a production knife, but at um, 205 euros, this is the most expensive one I've paid for. I had this a few years, and back in the day when the company I, company I worked for used to make a profit, we used to get a bonus each year and for a while it was about a month's salary so what we'd do is I'd split it in half put half the bonus into our joint savings and the other half would split between myself and Mrs Nicest Knives to do with whatever we pleased and one year what I did was buy this absolute stunner I'm a big fan of the RWL34 as a blade steel. 
you usually expect it to be quite hard Rockwell. This is 60 to 62. So, if you blunt it, it can take a bit of sharpening, but you're not likely to blunt it if you're using it properly. Just occasional strop now and again, it's more than enough. So that, if I can clear up this mess, is a little look at <coughs> some of the more expensive knives and some of the cheaper knives that I bought for my collection. I did initially think that I would only be buying budget knives and that way I'd build the collection a lot quicker. But very soon my head was turned by what's out there if you pay a little bit more. And for me, 200 pounds, sorry, 200 euros, about 150 quid, is an awful lot of money to pay for a pocket knife and it's not something that I'll be doing very often. But when you know just how nice some of those knives out there are, well, you've got to get one or two, haven't you? So there we go. Just answering a few questions from my good mate Chad, the fat man. Hope you found that interesting and thanks for watching.